This is the easiest belt printer I have ever used. My name is Jim and this is the Edge of Tech. Today we're going to take a look at the Idea Farmer IR3 V2. I just wanted to talk about this printer because it is a printer that's being released very, very soon. Now what makes this printer different than what we usually see on the channel is that it prints on a belt. You can see the belt right here. There's no build plate, it's not removable or anything like that, but it's actually a belt that spins all the way around the platform. This is pretty cool because it allows you to do some pretty cool things that we'll talk about a little later. It is a Core XY printer, so it runs just like a Core XY would, except for that hot end actually prints at an angle down onto the belt. The belt itself is actually a metal belt that is coated in PEI, according to Ideaformer. Uh, it has been pretty good through my testing and probably one of the best belts that I've tested stock, like from factory, on one of these belt printers as far as like stuff sticking to it. It does, it does a really good job. Now the IR3 V2 does run on Clipper firmware, so if you're a Clipper lover, that's great for you. Um, I actually find that it runs pretty smooth. The interface uh, on my computer runs really good. It does have built-in Wi-Fi, so you can set it up and run everything from a computer or maybe your phone or whatever from the interface um, if you want to. Uh, it does allow you to do some really cool things right from that interface. Uh, you can check out the camera. There is a onboard camera. There's a light you can turn on and off and you can control all the settings, of course. Send uh, your prints to it, print straight from it. Definitely cool to have that interface there. And it's really cool to see Clipper on a belt printer in general. It is a pretty fast printer, actually. Real quick, I need to jump in and talk about FlexiSpot. Now, if you've been around the channel for long, you know that I already have a FlexiSpot desk that I film on in the main studio. Well, it was time for another one in another part of the studio space here, and I grabbed the FlexiSpot E6. Now, I opted for the black top, because in this studio space, I'm gonna be building little RC cars and projects and stuff like that, and I wanna be able to see them super easy. This top is very nice, it came with no damage, and this whole thing went together super easy. We actually just put this together, Tristan was helping and then screwing all the screws in and making this thing super sturdy. Wow, yeah, see? Super sturdy, this thing does not wobble. There's dual motors, one on each side. Should we see if it'll lift me up? This isn't gonna be graceful. Tristan has hit the button to raise me all the way up as tall as this thing goes. It is on the casters, so it's sitting a little higher than normal. They said it can hold 355 pounds, so I might as well try it. We've made it to the top. So we are all the way back down. That was a very long journey. The motors did great. This thing comes with a 15 year warranty on the desk frame and the motor and a two year warranty on the control panel and electronics. The FlexiSpot desks really have been the best sit stand desks I've had. I've had a few. This and is really high up. <laughs> this is really high up. <laughs> Check the Amazon link in the description below. And if you order it within this time frame right here, you'll get a free drawer with your purchase. Thanks again to FlexiSpot for sending this thing out. Now let's get back to it. I gotta keep doing this. <laughs> you gonna keep doing this? <laughs> so since this is a belt printer, the build area is a little bit different. It is 250 wide, 250 tall, and pretty much infinite as long as the Y goes. So because it's a belt, it'll just allow it to pretty much go as long as you want. You can see there's a sword right here that we'll show in a little while, and that is very, very long print, and it just shot it right off the end, and it just kept going. That's probably the coolest part about a belt printer is that it allows you to print some very large, very long things if you want to, but 250 by 250 by pretty much infinite is the size of the build area on this printer. In the front of the printer, you notice a 4.3 inch touchscreen, uh, which kind of has everything plugged in. This is where you put your SD card. Um, that has a network jack in the side of this too. So if you wanted to plug it straight into your network, I believe you could use that jack. Uh, it, the camera is plugged into it as, as well. Um, I do have to say, it's a cool touch screen. It's cool it's there, but it's not really good. Not my favorite thing, and I did let them know that. I, it's just, it's not as responsive as I want it to be. It's kind of slow, and there's just so much better touch screens out there on the market. But it is a touch screen, 4.3 inches, and remember, most people are gonna be probably using the web interface anyway, so it is what it is. Now, this is the very first uh, belt printer that I've actually used that has auto bed leveling. 
it's it's pretty cool it probes along the axis there to make sure that where it's going to print is good it automatically levels the bed and that's pretty cool there's other adjustments you can do in here if the bed's kind of traveling or if that bed leveling is outside of a certain range it shows you how to like level the plate underneath it is awesome that it does have auto bed leveling and to be fair i literally pulled this out of the box tristan and i set it up together um the, the setup the assembly and all that stuff very easy to do it only took with tristan's help maybe like 30 minutes it was very easy to do i didn't do anything else i ran the bed leveling and i sent my first prints so i didn't do any of the extra stuff i didn't uh, really dial this thing in i just used it right out of the box like most people would and it did a really good job and everything stuck to the bed thumbs up definitely a good thing the filament actually mounts on the side of the printer as you can see here the filament path is actually pretty good it, it goes straight into a filament runout sensor and then it goes up into the hot end from there. It says it can detect clogs and everything like that too. So I haven't tested that, but hopefully that is true. As stated before, it did come with a USB camera that plugs in uh, right to the, to the box here and kind of clips on the side right there. And a built-in light right here. This, this white piece right here is a built-in light. It's a camera and a light, which is very good options uh, right out of the box. Now, I could sit here and list off the spec list, but I'm not going to do all of them. I just wanted to go over the majority of the ones. Some of the things I didn't really talk about too deep in this video was that it does have linear rails on the side, so it runs up and down on linear rails, which is great. According to Ideaformer, it is uh, geared so that it should run with no problem with the tension on the belt and and all that so i can't really check that i can't really prove it um i just know that that's what they say everything looks to be built really good and sturdy i mean i can pretty much lift it i don't know if you want to but you could lift it from there and uh as far as production goes uh build quality definitely very good on this printer i started with the benchy that was on the card like i said I did the auto leveling and i just loaded some filament and sent it it didn't do anything else right out of the box and I got a pretty good Benchy. Um, not the fastest Benchy in the world. Uh, had a little string I just pulled off there. Um, other than that, not a terrible Benchy at all. Uh, I'm gonna show some close-ups while I'm talking, but it's cool that it's printed you know, at that angle so you can kind of see the angled lines as it's printed. But not a bad Benchy. Uh, I think the Benchy came out pretty good. It stuck down like it was supposed to. But like I said, decent Benchy right out of the box. The second thing I did was I jumped on and I found that Karen Chow's squeaky rubber ducks. And I wanted to print them not squeaky and not rubber, apparently, uh, in yellow PLA. That went well, except for the front, except for the beaks. Because I printed them in the wrong orientation. I printed them forward so it would print the, the front half of the duck first meaning it didn't have anything underneath the beak for the uh, beak to hold on to, and it just kind of fell off. In both of these, you can see that um, it didn't go well. If I would have printed them backwards, it would have actually printed the beak in midair because that's how these printers work. And I'm actually gonna print it like that. So stay tuned to uh, like my social media, Twitter and, and Instagram. I'll post some pictures. I didn't have time to rerun them before this video, but I will do that again and I'll show you this thing actually printing off the beak in, in pretty much midair. Karen, I love your duckies. They're amazing. We show them on hot mix a lot, especially with the squeakers. PLA, they come out really good too. Just be, print them in the right orientation on a belt printer and you'll actually have a face. <laughs> the next thing I did was I found some chain links on Thingiverse. I'll put the um, person in the description below, uh, but I found some chain links. I kind of put them together and, and printed them out they came out really, really good. Uh, a couple sets of links printed very, very well. And then um, disaster struck and one broke loose and caused a whole ton of spaghetti because they all just broke loose after that. I don't know what happened. I wasn't watching it um, on the camera. These came out really, really nice. And I have a pile of spaghetti uh for ones that didn't so after all that printed it was time to test this thing with something that was actually meant for a belt printer i'm talking something very long and my friend ryan over at the offset maker lab designed a special sword just for this video he's never designed a sword before so i wanted to send it over he did design it uh flat so it's two different sides they're both flat so they could print better i didn't have to cut it myself thank you ryan 
And this thing is 86 inches long. It came out very, very good. I had some weird stuff going on in the very tip, as you can see up here. And uh, this is just a purge line, so that just gets pulled off. But I did have some weird wobbly stuff going on. And then it stuck down the rest of the way just fine. It had a little bit of lifting up in here. Uh, so that was kind of weird, but it, it recovered. It was fine. And everything else looks so good. I'm going to get some close-up shots while we're talking here. But Ryan... I'm just knocking stuff. I'm just knocking stuff over. But Ryan, this thing came out so good. He actually did eyes and, and some other things to go on it. Um, I didn't get those printed yet for this video, but um, the, the handle came out great. The glasses uh, came out great and it, it really did come out good. So that was that. And I did actually print both sides. Unfortunately, the other side um, didn't quite make it. So I actually printed it in this color. This is just a gorgeous color. It came out so good. Uh, this was going to be the back side. It still is. I'm going to glue it all together. Um, it was sitting up here on the table. It accidentally got bumped. It fell off the table and now it's in three pieces. <laughs> so uh, the way it fell down, it kind of fell down at an angle and it didn't do great. There's that. And then the front is like this. And this tip did not have an issue. Um, it's a little bit flimsy because of how thin it is, but it didn't really have an issue printing, but it really came out nice. You can see the sheen there. The print looks good. The layer lines look so good. And I'm just going to actually use some gloop. Shout out to uh, gloop. And I'm going to gloop the back on to the front and we're going to make a full sword out of it. Stay tuned. I'll put that on social media when that happens too. So we talked about some specs of this thing. I showed off some prints, uh, which I've been pretty impressed with right out of the box and especially for a pre-production unit. It's very important to let you know that Idea Farmer did send this to me. It is a pre-production unit. Everything came out pretty good. I know they're still working through some things and, and that'll be good. I think I really hope they can get the uh, touchscreen working a little bit better or, or more responsive at least. That's kind of my only gripe. Like I said in the very beginning of the video, this literally has been the easiest belt 3D printer I've ever used. I've had a few of them and You've probably only seen one or two on this channel because I just never had really great experiences with them until now. So nice work, Idea Farmer. The IR3V2 um, is, is actually a pretty good belt printer. So what I'm trying to say is that if you are in the market for a 3D printer for maybe cosplay, maybe like long swords or, or pieces that are long structural parts, you could print like huge Lego blocks or something like that on this, uh, definitely consider this. Um, Idea Former, the IR3V2, it's definitely worth considering. Also, if you're in the production side of things, not a bad option. I know Pooch over at Repcord uses belt printers and shoots that stuff. He, he puts them on the wall. He just lets stuff flow and they drop right down off the belt when it's done into boxes. Super smart. Um, but batch production on these is a really cool idea, especially if you can tune your model to print on one of the belt printers. So. That's something to think about. Now the elephant in the room is that currently it is live on Kickstarter and I have to give you my Kickstarter warning that if you back a printer on Kickstarter, pretty much only use disposable money. It is not a guarantee. Kickstarter does not guarantee you're gonna get anything. If the project succeeds, which they already have, they've blown past their goal. Nice work, congratulations, idea former. It is on Kickstarter, but it's also available for pre-order on their website. So jump over there, order it there. If it never comes, you can deal with your credit card or whatever from there. But honestly, I don't think they're going to do that. I think Idea Farmers, uh, a company that's going to deliver what they say, that the, the printers are here. Um, there's several of them out there already. And, you know, I think they're talking like February-ish delivery if I saw the website correctly. So if you're looking for one, definitely check this out though. Overall, very functional printer. I want to see what else I can print with this thing. If you have ideas of what I should print on this thing, let me know in the comments below if you had one. What would you print as well? I'm, I'm really curious um, what people out there would do if they had a belt printer. If you have a belt printer, what do you print on it? Shoot me some ideas. I'd love to check them out. And as always, I really appreciate you guys watching. Smash that like button if you like this. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And don't forget to check out this video right here if you haven't seen that one yet. It's a, it's a good one, this one right here.